Well, the New York Rangers have not had an easy go of these Stanley Cup playoffs, and full disclosure, I am cheering <laughs> for Boston, so I'm enjoying it. Really? <laughs> yes. Really? Yes. I don't know about that. <laughs> they, you're right, though. They haven't had an easy go. First, they take the Capitals to Game 7, and then they get paired up with the big Boston Bruins, only to fall three games to none right off the hop. Game 4 tonight. One more loss, and the Bruins could take the sweep. Krejci swings after Marjan. Back to Krejci. Rips it down to Horton. Horton back and puts it. Krejci. Horton with a chance. Scores! Horton's fifth makes it one zip Bruins. Just over a minute later, Boston with a man advantage. Troy Krug with a beauty from the point. Third goal in four playoff games. Rangers are in trouble. Less than a minute later, Carl Hagelin with the weak backhand. Puck trickles in. Tuka Rask actually falls down. He can't recover to keep it out. The Rangers catch a break. That cuts the lead to one. Just over a minute into the third, off the dump, and Derek Stepan steals the puck from Zdeno Chara, and he tucks it in. Great play by Stepan, his fourth goal of the playoffs, and he ties it at two. Tyler Sagan would get the go-ahead goal with about 12 minutes to go. Two minutes after that, Stepan feeds Brian Boyle, ties it at three. Rangers aren't out yet. Face off one by Stepan, and away comes Dash with Kreider. Dash works in, centers it, score! Chris Kreider, overtime winner! The Sharks and Kings all tied up at two games apiece. Two minutes left in the second. No score until Ange Kopitar nets the rebound from the point shot. Kings go up one zip. Start of the third. Kings have two seconds left in the man advantage. They win the faceoff, and the puck goes back to Slava Voinov. Anti Niemi never sees it. LA goes up 2 0. 30 seconds left in the game. Empty net. The Sharks win the draw, but Dan Boyle loses it. Jeff Carter makes his way down for the empty netter. Kings take a 3-2 series lead. Blackhawks in the process of digging a deep hole, trying to stop the bleeding. Down two games to one, and the wings strike first. Jakob Kindle makes it one zip. No more goals for a long time. Now dying minute of the game, and Valtteri Filpula finds Daniel Cleary. That's an easy empty netter. Blackhawks should start to panic, now facing elimination in game five. A Hall of Fame goaltender is going back to where he ended his playing career as the next head coach of the Colorado Avalanche. Patrick Waugh, who becomes the 14th bench boss in franchise history, will also serve as vice president of hockey operations. The 47-year-old is a three-time Vezina Trophy winner and captured two Stanley Cup titles with Montreal and Colorado. Named St. Patrick, Waugh spent the last eight seasons as coach of and GM of the Quebec Remparts of the Quebec Junior League. The CTV Playoff Report, sponsored by Horse Racing Alberta. Live thoroughbred racing at Northlands Park every Friday and Saturday. And more exciting playoff action, a tiebreaker game at the Memorial Cup. Saskatoon Blades versus the London Knights. Loser goes home. The host Blades were short a key defenseman. Dalton Thrower suspended for the rest of the tournament for a headshot last night. Well, pick it up in the second. one nothing London. Seth Griffiths leads the rush. Great move on the defender. 2 nothing. Less than a minute later, Chris Tierney makes it a three-goal game. Could use Dalton Thrower right about now. The host team never recovers, falling 6-1 at the hands of the Knights. London moves on to the semis to face Portland. Now we'll move over to the pool and a story about a son of a swimming legend. His success in the water to this point has been remarkable, but what's even more remarkable is that he's living and training right here in Edmonton. Long way from home and family, but still under the long and looming shadow of his father, a true Canadian hero. I'm going to work on some stroke reliability here. From this club, we have three swimmers going to Worlds. An amazing achievement for the Keanu Swim Club, especially since it is not affiliated with a national training center. And one of the swimmers that qualified for the World Championships has a very familiar last name. And it's our world record for 17. And it's finally that Olympic swimming gold medal for Alex Bauman. In 1984, Alex Bauman became a Canadian swimming legend after winning two gold medals at the Olympics. Now his son lives and trains in Edmonton. One of the first talks we did have was just understand I'm never going to compare you to your father. Ashton Bauman spent the first 14 years of his life in Australia and New Zealand before moving to Ottawa with his family six years ago. He then followed his coach to train in Edmonton, and the expectations and comparisons to his father have also followed him west. The expectation 
to live up to like even remotely live up to like what he has accomplished is not only in some ways impossible, but like, yeah, it'll always be there. But Ashton says he wasn't really aware of his father's stature in swimming until moving to Canada. Like I always knew what he accomplished, but um, I wasn't really aware of the magnitude until I came to Canada and I started, even the smaller meets, like people like didn't know, know him, but once you got up into the bigger meets, like even provincials and then you get to nationals and everything, like he could even show up on pool deck basically because it was just like, like he was just getting swarmed. And Ashton just happens to be a chip off the old swimming block, gliding through the water with ease, even with one of our portable cameras in hand. The kid who at one time says he wasn't really interested in the sport has become a world-class swimmer in just six years. Is he anything like his dad? I think so. He's obviously very talented, but he's uh, got a tremendous work ethic. He's motivated, he's focused, he really knows what he wants to do in swimming. I want to take this as far as I, uh, as far as I humanly can. Like, I'm not the kind of person who makes these sacrifices like lightly. I don't, I don't want to just you know, throw this away when it's such a good opportunity. Ashton and his teammates will compete at the World Championships in Spain this July. By the way, Alex Bauman is no longer a part of Canada's Own the Podium program. He resigned his position two years ago to take a similar job in New Zealand. And over to the opening round of the Crown Plaza Invitational in Fort Worth, Texas, where a couple of Canucks are in the mix early on. We'll get to them in a sec, but we'll start off with former Oklahoma State Cowboy Ricky Fowler announced he will donate 100 grand towards tornado relief in Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Fowler from just off the green on 11. He chips it in for the bird. He finished at one under. Brampton, Ontario's David Hearn, just one of top 10 in 14 starts this year, drains the bird on nine, his third in a row. Fellow Canadian Graham Dillette gets the bird on 12. That moves him to six under, just two off the lead. Then on 18, Hearn will nail this putt from the fringe. He shot a six under 64. He also sits two back of the lead. They make it look so easy. <laughs> it really is that easy. Really? No, no it's not. Not a chance. <laughs> Maybe for you. No. 